Praise the Lord, saints. God bless you again. We want to thank the Lord for another blessed day that he has given us to, to, to enjoy. Thank him for waking us this morning, closing us again in our right mind. And most of all, giving us a mind to acknowledge him and to confess him and to believe that he is, that he is rewarded of them that definitely seek him. We want to thank God for all these many blessings that he has, uh, this open door he blessed us to be able to tonight. You know, we ain't, can't get in the in the sanctuary on Tuesday night because we don't have nobody there on Tuesday night. But and uh, but until we get back in the sanctuary on Tuesday night, we thank God for this door. Thank God for blessing us to be able to minister to you from my home. So we appreciate everything that the Lord do for us. Thank God. The Bible says he does all things well, so we know and we learn to accept it. We learn to believe it because of, we know that he's in charge. We know he said that he he declared the end from the beginning. You know, And I thank God for him being in charge and control tonight. You know, it may not, it may not go the way we think it ought to go, or the way, way, way we want to go, but he's in charge. The Bible says he's the author and he's the finish of our faith. So he tells us to run with patience, this race that is set before it, looking under Jesus, the author, and the finish of our faith. So we just got to keep running with our eyes up on Jesus. He is the author and the finish of our faith. Make them what it looks like to us, what it sounds like, what it feel like. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. As John the Baptist told me, I think I got in my scripture, John the Baptist told the people, said, Behold the Lamb of God. That take away the sins of the world. That's what we got to do. Look up on this man that's taking away our sin. We got to behold him. And nothing there to look to. You know, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, would you leave me? Did y'all go? Peter said, to whom shall we go? He said, ain't no way up to go. You got the words of eternal life. So man, just ain't nothing else out there. So there ain't nothing else out there for us, folks, but Jesus. So we want to run with patience just raise that the self, he's in control. They got a song out, an old song out, we're oh, we going to come out of winter at the finishing line. Thank God we're going to come out of winter at the finishing line. We just run with patience. Don't worry about The Bible says the race ain't to the swift and the battle ain't to the strong. So don't worry about how strong you are, how fast you're running, man. Just run with patience. Run with the determination. Thank God that you're going to see this thing through. I appreciate the Lord, man. Thank God for all your prayer that you've been taking up for one another, especially those that pray for me, too. I really appreciate We need your prayer. And I thank God for you. The scripture tells us that the effects of fervent prayers of a righteous person are very smooth. So we believe. We have to stand on that. And we know our right name in ourselves. Our right is Jesus. The Bible says Jesus, he's our righteousness. So we believe in him, trust in him. I believe Jesus, hear our prayers. So we got to keep them prayers up one for another. Those that are struggling, those that are going through stuff, then keep them up in prayer. That God, somebody got to help. Somebody the Lord will deliver. Somebody Jesus will break that yoke on if we, if we just keep faith. Keep faith and don't doubt. You know, just believe God and God. I don't care what the situation seems to be, what it look like. Father, I'm believing you. I'm believing you're going to work things out. I'm believing you're going to fix this stuff up. So let's just keep faith. Let's walk in faith. That's the script tell us we walk by faith and not by sight. We're going to go and pray for a moment. I thank God for you. <sighs> Ask God for your blessed service tonight. Here. Father, thank you tonight for this word tonight. I really appreciate you, Father, for giving us something to do. Oh, then it, it's a joy to me. It's a blessing. It's a thrill to me, God. Having something to do for you, Lord. I could be doing many other things, but Lord, you so fit that you have me to be ministering to you tonight, and I thank you for it. God, I ask you to bless the hearers. Lord, they'll be here in the service tonight, God, and bless the hearers and the doers. Bless their children, God, and raise up a standard on their behalf for them, God, every situation that the enemy them coming in brought. I'm asking you, Jesus, you raise up a standard. Lord, you said that you use you, on time. Use on time, God. You may not come, we won't, but you're on time. Lord, you did everything according to your time schedule. And Father, man, you're not allowed to move, bless, deliver. You got the bound, break, break the yoke off the bound. Lord, heal the sick. God, that be among us in the name of Jesus Christ. God, help our nation, move for our nation, God, our cities, our town. Lord, it's just in a or they're in a, they're in a place of trouble. And Father, I'm asking you tonight, if you look down out of heaven, and God and see the, the mess that we're in now, and God send deliverance, God send revival, fire that 
bring us back to you five five that burns up the chair. In the name of Jesus Christ, and, and keep those, Lord. If you're not gonna, I mean, you keep your people, sustain them as you sustain the children of Israel. God, in the camp of Negotian, in the camp of Goshen, God, I sustain your people. God, you told us a lot of this violence and stuff going to come about. God, you say you'd keep us in that hour. So I'm asking you, Lord, to keep us those that you have called and chosen. Your people, God, you say your foundation of God standing sure having this seal that the Lord knows them that are here. God, you know those that are yours. God, make them live where they at right now. I'm asking you, God, to be a fence about them. Be the shield. Be this buckle. God, that shield and protect them, God, until the time of deliverance come from them. And Lord, we will thank you tonight. Give me the hearts and minds of these that are gathered in this place. Look up on your family. These children, God, move for these children, these grandchildren, God. I, I pray, work things out them. God, give them a mind to turn to you. Lord, just, just let them just give you a, a try. Try you. I'm asking to be so, Lord, and I thank you. Give me the hearts and minds of these, Lord, that, that'll be viewing this service tonight. And we give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Praise God. I thank God that I appreciate you tonight. We're going to speak to you for a few minutes. It's such a blessing. Thank God to have a mind. If you got a mind, to, you know, I talked to Sister Bruce today. She said, Brother, I'm still holding on. But I know I asked that question a long time ago when this little virus has come in. And I said, like, you still holding on? So she told me, this, Brother, I'm still holding on. Sometimes this old body just don't act right, but I'm still holding on, still having the faith in Jesus. That's what, it's, that's what, it, that's what it's all about, is having faith in Jesus. Don't lose that faith in Jesus. Sometimes the devil attack our body. And we can't do the thing we want to do. Sometimes it slows us, it hinders us, and we can't do the thing we do. But thank God, don't let the devil get to that mind. Thank God, you hold on to Jesus. Jesus, I confess you to be my everything. I confess you to be my all. Let him know you accept, you confess him. Let him know you accept him. But Jesus, sometimes those flesh may not be acting right, but Jesus, I confess you, I accept you, I acknowledge you. You to be my everything, my all in them. All my salvation is my Baptizing the Holy Ghost, my everything. That's what I tell you, Jesus. I accept you, my everything. My all in all, Jesus. I said, God, let me speak this stuff in my heart because I believe it. And I confess it. And let Jesus know that you believe it. You may have trouble in certain areas, but let Jesus know, thank God, you accept him as your everything. Thank God. I appreciate the Lord. Now, I'm going to speak to you for a few minutes from the Word of God. I thank God for the minister. God bless the ministers. You know, keep them up. We keep the minister up in prayer. And God will bless the minister, handmaids, and all of you, those of you that are trying to do something for God. It's a mind, it's a night. It's good to have a mind tonight to do something for Jesus. I don't care what you do. Do something for Jesus. The Bible told me that so you've been faithful in that which is the least. Now I'm going to make you rule over many. And I don't make worry about being a ruler over some, but I like that. Well done, you have been faithful serving. You've been faithful. I like that part. You know, you've been faithful of a few things. Thank God. I, I want God to speak that to me one day. You've been faithful of a few things. Thank God. So we're going to go to the book of Philippians 3. Go to the book of Philippians 3. And we won't hold you too long if the Lord say the same. We ain't plan on it. But uh, thank God for this beautiful weather you've given us today. So I encourage you just hold on. You know, Keep your hand in Jesus' hand. Whatever you do, keep your hand in Jesus' hand. They got that song. Put your hands in the hands of the man that steal the water. Put your hands in the hands of the man that comes to see. Folks, he is the way, truth, and he's the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Jesus Christ. So keep your hands in this man's hand. Think on them. What goes on with you? You keep your hands. You strive to keep your hands in the hand of Jesus Christ. Thank God. If you put your hands in his hand, he get a hold of you. He won't let you go. I guess that's why they said put, his, put our hands in his hand because if we put his hand in our hand somewhere, we may, it, uh, trials and tests may come and we'll let him go. But man, if we put our hands in the Jesus hand, he ain't going to let you go. He said, man, all that the Father giveth me coming to me and he may come to me, I will know why. I won't let you go. I won't cash you out. I'll keep you. I'll preserve you. I'll sustain you. So you put your hands in the hands of the man that steals the water. And his name is Jesus. Book of Philip in chapter 3. I think I... I had it written down and started verse, but I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going to start at verse 1. And, uh, so just bear with me for a few minutes. It's a final, my brother, rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you. 
To me, indeed, it is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the circumcision, which is consistent with the circumcision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Paul tells me, listen here. We are the one that worship God in the spirit and in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Paul tells me, you're going to get on down here in a minute. I'm going to read here what Paul, what Paul said. I have no confidence in my flesh. And we're the one that, and we got to, we got to take on that same mind. And I don't care who you are, how strong you are, how bad you think you're running. You can't put no confidence in the flesh. Paul said, we are the, we are the circumcision that put no confidence in the flesh. I know a lot of people put confidence in their flesh. But let me tell you something, it's going to let you down. Flesh is going to let you down. Flesh cannot stand. It's going to let you down. You better believe in Jesus Christ. You better, man, get your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what he has done for you. Man, the price that he has paid for you, you put your confidence and trust in Jesus Christ, you strive. God help me to please. I want to please. I want to live for you. Don't put your confidence in your flesh. How much you do this? You know, how much you fast? How much you pray? How much you read your Bible? You better put your confidence in Jesus. Paul said, I put no confidence in the flesh. Jesus told me in the garden that Jesus asked them to pray with them for now. Watch him pray. Jesus went off to pray and come back to sleep. You know the story. Jesus said, could you not pray with me now? He said, watch him pray. He said, the flesh is willing. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Folks, this flesh is weak. Your flesh, my flesh, all flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. So Paul said, we put no confidence in my flesh. I do not put no confidence in my flesh. Because I know my flesh is weak. Listen to what he says here. He put no confidence in the flesh. Pray for Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, Paul said, I the more. If anybody think he has confidence in the flesh, Paul said, I, I, can, I can have more. I can. I can do. I the more. Of the thing that I've done. I can have confidence in the flesh if I trust in it. If anybody have a reason to trust in the flesh, Paul said, I do. Of my accomplishment. And sometimes people look at their accomplishment. And, and they'll put confidence in their flesh, but the Bible said we're not to do that. This is what Paul said here. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a, a Hebrew. Uh, he said, man, I'm the top of the line, a Hebrew of the Hebrew. Man, I'm the, I'm the cream of the crop, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He said, I'm it. He was giving all his credentials here, but yet still Paul said, we put no confidence in this flesh. Circumcised the eighth day according to the law of God that gave Moses and the law, the Jews the law, Abraham the law to circumcise that kid the eighth day. He said, man, circumcised the eighth day. Giving his credentials. His, the Paul said, yes, all this stuff Paul tells us, here, listen to what he says here. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrew, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless, Paul said, man, touch the right which is in the law, Paul said, I'm blameless. But yet I put no confidence in my flesh. Paul was giving him all his credentials, what he, who he was, what he had done. He said, but I put no confidence in my flesh. According to the, the, the right which of the law, he said, I'm blameless. Man, I'm blameless. He be in I put no confidence. Sometimes we think we are blameless, let me tell you, but don't put no confidence in your flesh, folks, I'm telling you. Don't you pat yourself on the back. Stick out your chest because you did this and you did that. This is what Paul said, verse 7. But what thing were gained to me, those that kind of law, for Christ? Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom I have suffered, the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. I'm speaking tonight on count it as dumb. Paul said, I count this stuff but dumb. Paul said, I suffered the loss of all things. What they were gaining me, I count them law. Paul said, listen here. Man, they used to look up to me. They used to reverence me. Man, they used to fear me. They would reverence me. They would fear me. They would respect me. Man, everybody knew about me, man. They would talk about me, man. When I come in town, everybody in the Paul said, listen to all them things. I count them law. What was gaining me? Paul, that stuff used to be a gain to me. But now, I count that stuff law for the knowledge of Christ. And I may win Christ. Even when Paul was on the way to Damascus, thank God, the, 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 God told, the, the man told the Lord, the Lord, we heard this man. They got a letter from the, from the leaders to come in. Anybody they find, call them your name, to put them in jail, lock them up. They, they feared Paul. 
Because all this stuff, man, I kind of all belong. But what thing would gain to me? You know, one why Paul really, I mean, he probably uh, really lavish in that. Being respected, being feared, being known, being recognized, being honored, being respected. And that, was, that was something, man, he may feel big about because of that religion that he in, but he didn't know God. He didn't know Jesus. Man, but on that road to the mountain, Jesus knocked him off his high horse. Thank God Paul knew Jesus. Paul's man, this, that's the God I've been serving. He don't see, he ain't speaking to me. This God here speaks to me. And Paul said, listen to him. What fame would gain me, the old thing used to be a man really meant something to me. Our people respected me and treated me. He said, man, what fame would gain me? Paul said, I have, I counted them lost. Man, the thing that would gain them, we got to count them things lost. Count them but lost. The Bible tells us that what in, in Matthew there, no man can serve two masters. Paul said, I can't serve two masters. He's going to hate the one and love the other. He's going to uh, pull to the one and despise the other. Paul got to the place and listen here. Man, look, I can't serve. I can't serve the religion I used to serve. I either got to serve the one or the other. Paul said, listen here. I'm suddenly lost of all things, man, for the Jesus, for Jesus' sake. I suffer, and do kind of a dumb. Paul said, all this stuff. Thank God we got to get to the place where we count our position, our title, whoever we, who we walk. Thank God we got to count that but dumb as manure for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. I count it all down. The thing that meant to us, you know, sometimes, you know, it's bad that sometimes we bring that stuff over in church, you know. You got pimps and players and all this stuff in the church. You got all this stuff that was thing they wore in the world. And now they bring it in the church. They want to have this same uh, status in the church and they want to be acknowledged, want to be recognized. God made a servant. God made a servant. He didn't make us to be Lord. He made a servant. Even the Bible said Jesus said, took on him the form of a servant and became obedient to death. God make us servant. He make us to be a, a Lord. He didn't make us to be high up, try to be, look, he made us servants. So Paul said, listen here, the thing that began to me, I count them but law for the that I make the law for Christ. Listen, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. For the knowledge of Jesus, of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. We got to count this stuff but dumb. Man, God, forget about who you are. If any man be in Christ, well, he's a new creature, old oh, thing. We got to have this kind of mind. God, I know sometimes want to bring this stuff and it won't be this, won't be miss this and miss this and stuff like that. Boss, the Bible doesn't forget about this stuff. Forget about who you are. You know? Let it be dumb. It don't mean nothing to you. The Bible said the earth's going to pass away, the world's going to pass away, and the lust they are. Thank God, forget about all that stuff and try to focus on mind. Jesus, give me the faith. Give me the mind. Open up my understanding. Let me love you. Let me seek after you. Give me that. Let me try to get to that place in you, God, where I can find favor with you. Forget about all this other stuff. Forget about, man, uh, who you are, what, what position you have, what type you have. Thank God. said, God, help me to get in this place. Paul said, man, I suffered loss of all these things. I count all stuff but dumb. All my position, my power, my authority, the fear, the respect, the acknowledgement that the man that people are showing me, he said, all that stuff but dumb. I count it all but dumb. For the essence of the knowledge of Christ. Thank God the Bible said, man, uh, Matthew 13, that man when this man went out and found a treasure. Man, the king made him like a man that found a treasure. And he went out and sold everything and he hid the treasure, went out and sold everything he had that he may purchase that fear. This Paul said, listen now, I'm selling out everything. I'm trying to win Jesus. I'm trying to get Jesus. All this stuff don't mean nothing to me. All this stuff I got, he said, I'm selling it out. Thank God Luke said, listen here, uh, you count this cost up. The 14, I believe, you count the cost up. If you're going to follow me first, count this cost up. And see if you're willing to follow me. Paul said, listen here, all this stuff don't mean nothing to me. Man, I found a treasure. I found a pearl. I found a jewel. Thank God I'm selling out everything. Thank God. The man to buy, to purchase this field, which is Jesus Christ. I suffered the loss of all things, but kind of a dumb. As God help us to get in that place. Thank God for we kind of everything but lost. Sometimes our mind, our eye, is upon all this material stuff and, and our position, stuff like that. And sometimes we can't serve God because our eyes is focused upon this stuff. As God help me to sell out everything. Help me by the kind of a dumb that I may, God help me to win you. 
The Bible say that, the Bible say, and I, I read here, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians, Colossians 1, the Bible said, Christ in you. The hope, Paul said, Christ in me, a hope of glory. So, man, I'm suffering, I suffer all the things I can, but now to get Christ in me, because this is the only thing God, the way I'm going to make it is to have Jesus in me. He said, I'm selling out everything. Christ in me, folks, we got to have Christ in us. The very hope of glory. We got to have him in us. After Jesus lived in me, take your boat, help me. God, when I'm weak, give me strength. When I'm weak, God, give me strength. You, you, you do something for me, Lord. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Paul realized that. Christ in me, the hope of glory. So Paul said, look at all this stuff but done. Paul said, I can't serve two masters. I'm going to have to let one of them go. And Paul chose to serve Jesus. He chose to let go of all that respect that he had. And then he accepted. He chose to serve Jesus. Then he chose to serve Jesus. Thank God they got to beat him up. Same thing he did to my people. Beat him up, put him in jail. Man, he served the same thing. He got beat up. Got put in jail. Got left for dead. But this was the, this was the man that he may get the essence of the knowledge of Christ. He said, I'm forsaking all this stuff. Man, when they used to rev me, now they spit on me. Now they run me out of town. Now they put me in jail. Now they beat me up and they used to respect me, fear me, rev me. Now, but for the name of Jesus, say, now they'll beat me up. They'll lock me up. They'll leave me for dead. They're talking about me. He's been all for the ecstasy of the knowledge of Christ. He said, man, I've suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb. Thank God we ever get in that place. Man, they, they used to call you Mr. This and Miss This and all that stuff. You said, all this stuff ever done. I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for a reputation. I'm not looking for all this stuff, man. Just let me get close to Jesus. And just let me find favor with Jesus. Count it down, folks. I don't care who you was out there, where you was. Be. Look, you let that, count that stuff but down. Leave that stuff alone. Don't drag that stuff over into, into God. Let it stay there. Literally, Paul said, But what thing me I count down? Listen. Yea, doubtless, verse 8. Yea, doubtless, I count all things. The law for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of, which is of God by faith. Paul said that I may know him in the power of the resurrection, in the fellowship of his servant, being made comfort unto the Paul said that I may know Paul said I'm forsaking this stuff and giving all this stuff up. That I may know him. I'm, I'm forgetting about all this stuff. That I may know. Man, if your house, your car, your clothes, your money, your respect, your, look at if that's going man, that's gonna hinder you from knowing Christ, give it up. To God, here I am. I'm empty vessel. Listen, if this hinder me, if I if I got more pride about what I have, or my position, my name, and that's going to hinder you from coming. You can't serve two masters. You got to help me to give it up. Help me to count it down. If they, if they talk about it, let them call, talk about it. They call you a devil, let them call you a devil. All for the name of Jesus Christ. Say. Let them call you what they want to call you. Have your mind made up. Have your mind made up. Christ in you, the very hope of glory. Thank God. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the very hope. There ain't no hope for glory. If Christ ain't in you, Paul said, man, I suffer the loss of all things. Then I ain't win. He said, man, all this stuff, man, he's back. All these things were gained to me. The stuff that were gained me, I kind of lost. I kind of belong. The stuff used to be a gain to me. Man, it used to mean something. But right now, Paul said, don't mean nothing to me, man. I met a man. I met a man that told me what I said. I met a man, thank God, that changed my heart, changed my life. I met a man. Thank God. And now, man, all these things that were gained to me once were... It's important to me. He said, now they ain't no more important, man. It's just like manure. It's just like dung. We got to get in that same place. As God help us to get in that same place. Well, we appreciate the Lord. He blessed us with You know. But we don't put no confidence in our flag. We don't put no confidence in the thing that we have. You know. You put your confidence in God. Listen, that I may know him. In the power of resurrection. Paul I'm going through all this stuff. I'm forsaking everything I got. That I may know him. That I may know if this is going to be a hindrance to me, Paul, if this is going to be a hindrance to me, I, I forsaken it, I get rid of it. If this is going to separate me from you, Lord, that I don't know you, he said, I get rid of it. Paul got to get rid of it. Thank God, forget about you know, 
Who y'all? Thank God. The Bible says in Matthew, Matthew 11. I got some of these scriptures written down by just that one verse there. What did Matthew say? Matthew 11. Verses uh, 12. Matthew 11, verse 12. Listen. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by four. Another one translator said, and about they seizing this thing as a as a precious pride. Violent take it by four. The king of God suffered about God forbid violent. He said, the violent take it by four. And, and one translator said, they're seizing up on this thing. They're seizing the kingdom of, of heaven. They're seizing up this thing as the most precious pride, most valuable pride. Then we'll pause and listen here. Man, to know Jesus, man, it's just, I'm, 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 man, I'm seizing up on that. Then I'm willing to lose everything I got. I'm willing to count all but dung. Man, at this precious pride, he's, he's giving everything up for sake of all. Man, that, that he may win Christ. The Bible says, man, that they seizing up on it as a precious pride. Jesus is going to mean more to us than anything you ever own anything you can dream to own, anything you can dream to have, Jesus means more to you than that. Mean more to you than this whole world. And I sing that song sometimes, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Folks, I gotta have him. You gotta have him. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus, and I won't turn back. God help us not to turn back. I won't turn back. The Bible says, man, the king from the days of John the Baptist. Until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence taken by four. Man, they're, they're seizing up on this thing. Like Paul, Paul's, I'm seizing on this thing. I'm taking by, I see Jesus as the most precious pride. And man, I'm, I'm laying aside everything. I'm giving up everything. Then I may win Christ. And I'm not saying God ain't want you to go out and give your house away, or give your car away, or give your clothes away, and all that kind of stuff. He's not talking about that. You know? Paul I'm focusing on Jesus now. All that stuff is just. As the Bible say, man, it's an add on. All that stuff just something God done blessed me with. But my focus, my mind, is on getting Jesus, obtaining Jesus, getting Jesus in my life. And he said, I see Jesus as a, the most precious, most valuable prize. I'm the, the, ceasing the kingdom of heaven. As the most precious prize. Okay. And we get back to Philippians in a minute here. Listen. Colossians 1, I quote this scripture while I go, but I'm, I'm going to read Colossians 1. It's Christ in you. Listen. Colossians 1, verse 27. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. The hope. Paul knew that. He realized it. Paul didn't have no life. He didn't have no life that's going on working for those. You know, he's a, Paul was the important man. I was probably the next, to be in, next in line to be the top man. But, but he didn't know God. You know? All he knew was that religion. He, he worked for those, those, those religious leaders, but he didn't know God. You know? But he come to a place where Jesus spoke to him out on the road to Damascus. And he found out the man that that's a God that speaks. Thank God, the God that I've been serving with, this, with the old scribe and Pharisee, man, he didn't speak. We just going out there trying to go by the law and what they say, but he didn't speak. But this God, I'm serving that he speak. Paul comes to the realization that listen, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Told us that in Revelation. He said, Behold, I stand there doing that now. He said, If you hear my voice, I come in, I'll sup with you. I explain to you, I talk to you, I instruct you, I open up your understanding. I let you know the way that you're going. I know you got good intent, but that's the wrong way. He said, but I'll serve with you and you with me. And that's what he did with Paul. He served with Paul. He began to speak to Paul and let Paul knew. So Paul realized, listen now, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Man, this is my only hope. So I'm sorry you scribe and Pharisee, man, that trying to follow the law and not, he said, I'm sorry, thank God, but I found out that Christ in me. It's the hope of glory. The man, y'all ain't got Jesus in you. Ain't no hope of glory in you. He's so therefore I'm with me. Oh, you know, he made a lot of enemies out of his uh, used to be friend. Made a lot of enemies because he turned and started following Jesus. He forgot about the law. 
He's, he's still fire in the spirit. And he made a lot of enemies. But that's all right. The Bible didn't matter what's the man property. If you gain the whole world and lose this, what, what do we profit? What do we profit if we gain the whole What do we profit if we gain the whole world and lose that? The Bible tells us that, the, man, the world going to, not the world need to think that in it. All that's in the world is lust of the flesh and eye and pride, like you know what it says. He said the world going to pass away and the lust there are. So what is the profit of us that we should gain the whole? Many people now that are rich and wealthy, when they leave, they're going to leave every bit of it. What did they profit? God's a warning to you if you're rich and ain't rich toward God, got all this stuff, but you ain't rich toward God. What are you going to profit them? Paul said, I'm selling out this stuff, man. Forget about a great name. Man, forget about respect. Man, so I'm trying to get Jesus. If you don't respect me, you don't respect me, but at least I have Jesus living in me. I get a hold of Jesus. If you don't like me, you just don't like me, it's all right. Thank God, man. I done found a prize. I done found a, a jewel. I done found a pearl. Thank God. And I'm setting out everything and I'm going to get this field. Thank God, I'm going to get this. I'm, the Bible says he bought the field. Bought the whole field. Thank God what that prayer was in. That trade was in. You know, treasure. The Bible said treasure. Not just a gold or silver treasure. You know, treasure ain't just a, a, a gold or silver. It, it treasure. Man, it, it's, it's everything. Man, it's a treasure. Not just a million dollar, but a treasure. And he sold out. Paul said, I found a treasure. I found a treasure. Man, I'm selling out. I found a treasure. And I'm selling out. Folks, it's going to be with it all. It's going to be with Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul said, listen here, to whom God will make known what is that riches of his of the glory of this mystery among the Gentile, which is with Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul said, man, I saw the loss of all things. He said, the thing that we... They they never gained me an act under the law. For Jesus' sake. This is what we gotta do. You know. I'm not telling you to go out and be no a, a fanatic. I mean, you can be a, a, a fanatic for Jesus, but I mean, you don't go out and do all weird and crazy stuff, you know. How much you love God, you know, look, I'm God, just love him. Love him. Love him. Sell out to him. Sell out your hatred. Sell out your bitterness. Sell out your envy. Sell out. Thank God your jealousness. Sell out your madness. Sell out your selfishness. Sell out all this stuff. And take up on man the fruit of the spirit. Take up on his act prescribed. Jesus, give me that praise. God, give me your attributes. Give me your characteristics. Give, give them to me, God. I, I need them. So I'm selling out everything. You know? sell, selling out our judgment. Selling out our, condemn, our condemning folks. Sell out. And the Bible says this man sold everything he had, sold out, when bought that field. Paul said, man, I'm selling out. Everything that made me what I was, everything that made me be, that made me popular, everything that made me respectful, he said, I'm selling out. So we, some of us may not have the stuff like Paul, but listen, we, we can get rid of the old spirits we got, jealousy, envy, malice, hatred, criticism, you know, fault finding. We can get sell out all that stuff. We found a treasure. And that treasure in Jesus, we can set out all this, this stuff and let all that stuff, thank God, while you feel justified, thank God, and, 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 and talking about somebody while you feel justified, man, and thinking evil because somebody did you wrong when you feel, sell that stuff out. You said, now I done found a treasure now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to satisfy my flesh. Paul said, we put no comfort in that flesh. I'm not going to satisfy my flesh by thinking this about somebody that did me wrong. I'm setting it all, Lord, I'm setting all that out. Said it all that out. Listen, listen what Acts. Acts chapter 4 says. Verses 12. Acts 4, verse 8. Let's start at verse 8. Chap, Acts chapter 4. We're going to have you out in a few minutes. And I'm gonna, I pray that you hear this word. I pray. We got to make up our mind. As, as Hebrew tells us, run with Peyton and Ray, run with the determination. This raised that set before looking under Jesus. I'm looking at nothing. I'm looking at Paul. I'm looking to Jesus now. He said, The life I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Because there's no more I now, but it's Christ in me. And the life I now live, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the life we need to God help us live this life. 
that we now live in the flesh. The life I now live in the flesh. This is Acts 4, verse 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost and said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if ye this day be examined of the good deed done, this, uh, this, this lame man had got healed. Deed to this important man by what mean he has made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the peoples of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified and got raised from the dead, even by him do this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at none of you builders, which we come in. He said, this is the stone. Peter said, this is the stone that you rejected. The stone that you spit on. The stone, thank God, that you denied. The stone that you whipped. He said, this is the stone which was rejected of you builders. Thank God, that's the stone that Paul rejected at one time. That's the stone that some, some of us rejected at one time. And we may not just reject, but we don't want to hear, have nothing to do with it. But Peter tell me, this is a stone man that was set in all of you build, that you rejected, that you despise, that you spit on, that you beat, that you whip. Peter won't tell me, this is the stone which was set at naught that you build. So you didn't think nothing of it? You despise it? Which you become the head of the corner. Neither, listen, neither there is salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be Saved. So this is the stone that and Paul realized, man, this is it ain't another name. Paul said, listen, it's not another name on heaven. Now, bro, I may be saved. It ain't sappy and nothing else. And Paul said, listen, there ain't no me seeking for nothing else. Ain't no me chasing after nothing else. Ain't no sense me working after nothing else. Ain't no me working for nothing else. I ain't gonna serve no two masters. He said, this is the, not another name, not another person, the name on the heaven given among men. Pause and listen in. But the name of Jesus Christ. And pause to listen in. I'm determined. I'm determined. I'm determined to be conformed. I'm determined to be as he is. I'm determined. This is what we got to do. We got to be determined. Y'all make don't care what you fight. Whatever you fight. The spirit you fight. You just you don't give up. You don't, let that, don't let that devil get your mind. Thank God Sister Bruce and I were talking about this. Don't let that devil get your mind. He may fight your body, man. That's got to be a fence about your mind. Thank God the Bible with the mind we serve God. And you don't let the devil get your mind. If he get that mind, he got you. Oh, he may, he may, uh, man, had a little weak little body. But thank God if he don't weaken that mind, you know, he, he, you know, he, he weakened your body, didn't he? Made him die. You know, Joe didn't have no strength. Man, after man the laws got down and up the skin and bone, you know he didn't have no strength. Didn't have no strength at all. He, he was a weak man, but thank God his mind was strong. His mind wasn't weak. His mind never got weak. It minds, there was the mind I serve God. And Joseph said, Listen, I make my, my flesh may be weak, man. I may be, man, can't do, can't take care of myself, so can't do it. But look at it, my mind is intact. But the mind we serve God. And Paul said, Listen, here. man, I'm, I'm something love of all things. Because I know there's not another name under heaven. And man, we got to realize that in another, I don't care. How people boast themselves, don't care about Buddha, Muhammad, Krishna, whatever other God they got out there. Thank God the Bible says it ain't another name. So this is the stone that was set in order, you built. And the Bible tells that Timothy that all scriptures given by the inspiration of God, the proper doctrine, teaching for proof, education. And Romans 15 said, man, the scripture that were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture may have hope. These scriptures that were written before time for our learning. There ain't another name under heaven. This scripture tell me that. Given among men that salvation is salvation in another name. Paul, I know that I realized it, I recognized it. He said, Therefore, man, I'm willing to count all this stuff that done. I'm, 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 I'm willing to let you disrespect me. I'm willing to let you beat me up. I'm, I'm willing to let you put me in jail. I'm willing to let you spit on me. I'm willing to let you uh, uh, leave me for dead. He, but look, there's another name. I'm heaven, so I don't want to know nothing among you. Listen. And we'll get back to Philip in a minute. I want to get these scriptures in here. And another name on heaven, folks. Whatever you might be say other than the name of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I suffer the loss of all things. The thing would have gained to me, I count the loss. You know? Sometimes we know we used to be popular, you know. Sometimes we get in church and we still want to be popular. And you forget that popularity. Oh man, forget about everybody's eyes on you. Sometimes we when you get in church, when everybody's eyes be on like we were who was in the streets in the world. Forget about that. That's not the Bible tells us and can that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
Old things have passed away. Now behold, all things become new. Get rid of that. Get a new mind. I heard Brother Fred was saying, Sister Amos saying, listen here, new wine goes in new bottle. You don't put new wine in old bottle. Thank God you don't put new wine in old bottle. You just ain't going to put that. That man, old bottle buck. Made out of his old skin. Wine, it, it busts. New wine goes in new bottle. You know? Thank God we're a new creature. You know? We can't serve two masters. We got to let one of them go. One of them got to go. One of them has got to leave. You know? If you're going to serve God and man too, you ain't serving God. I guarantee you that. Listen. Neither there is salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven given among men. Why about we must be saved? So why are we seeking for other stuff? Why are we seeking for a name? Why are we seeking for title? Why are we seeking for another? Salvation ain't coming through none of this stuff. I ain't got to hear your brother Fred saying, I believe last night listening to Odin Zechariah. He said, man, it, it ain't by might or by power, but by my spirit. Paul said, I read in the minute here. Paul said, listen here. We water, we plant, we plant water, but God give the empty. Paul said, listen here. I read. This is St. John 1, verse 29. St. John 1, verse 29. I'm going to, this is the time we got here. 8, 12. I got a few more minutes. I pray that you're listening. I pray that you're listening. This is St. John 1, which is 29 through 34. The next day John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin. That was, that was crying out. out on, the, on the man on the banks of Jordan. Thank God that behold, the Lamb of God was being cried out by John the Baptist. Behold, the Lamb that take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the Paul said, man, I'm beholding this man that can take away my sin. This woman, no, no, no. Behold nothing else. Behold this man that takes away your sin. John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Listen. This is a whom. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he walked before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come baptized with water. And John bore record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou seest shall see the Spirit descending and remain on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bore witness that this is the Son of God. John said, I, I didn't know him. That was John Cousin, but he said, I didn't know him. Only way I knew him, said, he said, this is the one they're going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. And when you see that spirit ascending as a dove and send up and remain upon it, this is he. John didn't know who Jesus was. But God himself told John, this is he who's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. This is why we got to say, ain't another name. This is why we got to set our eye, thank God, upon Jesus Christ. Because God told John, said, man, when you see this angel, spirit that sent him as a dove, and remain upon him, that this is he that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Why? I don't know how we can look to anything else but Jesus. Paul said, man, I'm setting out everything. This is the man that's going to give us the Holy Ghost. This is the man that forgive us of all our sin. I'm beholding this man, trying to behold this man that forgive me of my sin. Once you say, our sins are many. But thank God we got a God, thank God His name is Jesus, to forgive you of your many sins. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll throw them in the sea of forgiveness and don't remember them no more. Paul said, listen, all that was gained to me, I can't belong. So I'm, so I'm giving all this up, thank God. But man, thank God. You know, Paul had plenty of sin. Killing people, putting them there, beating them up, he had plenty of sin. But Paul said, man, now, I'm beholding this man that forgive me of my sins. Giving it all up. That's God help me to give it all up. Teach me how to give it all up. Teach me what to give up. God help me to seek after you. Seek after your will. And seek after your way. Seek after your understanding. Seek after your love. Seek after your kindness. Seek after all your oh, oh, attributes. But John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that take away this. Said, Look on him. Look to him. This man that take away your sin. Folks, ain't you looking at nothing else? You better look at somebody that can do away with your sin. You better look to him. Man, you better put your confidence in him. 
Thank God, because we can't wash away our own sin. Only Jesus. He's that cyclone. He came down. He wasn't that scapegoat. But God put all the sins on his back and went up in the, went up in the, up in, up on the Calvary Hill. Thank God. Took our sin with him. Bled our sin. The Bible, he was blue by our nigga. Wounded for our transgression. Checked our peoples upon him. So you behold him. Do like Paul. Paul telling us that Paul instructing us here. Man, so you look at you. Forget about everything. Listen. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2, verses uh, 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 through 5. You know the scripture. 1 Corinthians 2. Second chapter of 1 Corinthians. We're going to read verse 1 through 5. Listen. And I, Paul, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul says, I'm not coming with this stuff. I've been there. I had all that stuff, extra speech. They, they t I don't know. They, I hear him say Paul spoke so many different languages. Some people say 17 different languages. But he said, Paul's the listener, but I'm not coming to you with excellency of speech. So that stuff don't work. There's no pie in that stuff. Man, there's so nothing in that stuff. Excess beat this sound that make people look at you in reverence. Thank you really know something. He said, but I ain't come to you with this excess of speech of man wisdom. Hmm? Declare on you the testimony of God. Paul said, I'm not coming to you with that stuff. For I'm determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him being crucified. Folks, this is where we got to know him. He's the only thing that's going to benefit you. It's going to help you. It's to know him. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but what? In the pause of listening. Now I'm going to get you in this place where your faith stands in nothing but the power of God. Not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Pause. I walked that road one day. I've been down that path. That didn't do nothing for me. It didn't nothing happen. That didn't change me. He's but man, once I met Jesus, thank God he spoke to me. He changed my spirit. He changed my mind. He changed my heart. He said, I don't want your faith to stand in nothing. Man, but the power of God. I mean, no, Jesus Christ is the power of God. He is the power. Hebrews said, man, all the food. Hebrews, are, I think, one, one, two, three, said, listen, all the food. God had given Jesus a fullness of all things. You know? Made him heir of all things. Jesus is the power of God. God that made him add, Hebrews say one, I think. God that made him add to all things. Jesus add all things. He is the power of God. You know, he is the power of God. Paul said, I don't want you to know nothing among. I don't want to know the most of Jesus Christ. I don't want your faith to stand in nothing there. That's why I preach Jesus. I preach Jesus because Jesus told me that. And I was going to mention on that, but I got changed over to this. Jesus said that all the Father give me coming to me, and him that come, I will know why. Cast them out. Jesus gave us that promise. He said, if you come to me, I will know why. I will know why. Cast you out. I will be there to help you. He said, I, this is my promise I give to you. If you come to me, I will help you. I don't care who you are, what you are, but if you come to me, that the Father gave you to me, and if you come to me, I will know why. I cast you out. I won't turn you away. That is the promise that Jesus will give us. And this is why I preach Jesus, man. You look, you, you look, everything else is going to fade away. He said, I'm the Alpha, the Maker. First and last, the beginning of the end. Thank you, Father. Listen. A few more minutes. Jump over to the third chapter of 1 Corinthians. Jump over to the third chapter, verse 1 through 7. 1 through 7. And I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go back and do what you, do what you got to do. I don't know what you got to do, but whatever you got to do, we're going to free you up and let you go do what you got to do. I pray that you took time out. Thank God for you taking time out to, to sit and hear this, maybe about an hour, uh, hear the word of God, to, you know, to rejoice in it. Because, you know, we we are believers in Jesus Christ. So, we, you know, we love to hear good news. We love to hear some, you know, we, we on this old, old teacher journey. And we need something to encourage us, you know, day by day. And anytime somebody can bring the word of God to you, man, to encourage because we got our battle, we got our struggle, we got our fight every day. Anytime somebody can bring a word of God to you, man, it, 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 it helped you 
to help you push you on down the road, motivate you, strengthen you a little bit, man. We already enjoyed the year there. Thank God we're going to be fighting devils out there. Be fighting spirits out there. All of us fighting devils. Thank God so we hear the word of God. Maybe it'll help, help build our faith up. We should appreciate the Lord for that. Thank God we don't mind taking out an hour uh, 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 to hear the word of God. It, man, it should be no bother to us. Man, you can cook later on and you can eat later on. Whatever you, you can do that later on. Thank God we got to put Jesus the Bible down and have no God before me. So we, 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 when it's come time for church time, we need to take that time, set that time aside and say, God, this is church time. This is church time. I don't keep in your home. This is church time, God. I'm going to. I think you prepare, get ready for the Sabbath. We need to get ready for church time. So we hear the way God. Listen. First Corinthians 30, chapter verse 1 through 7. And I, brother, cannot speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hereditary you were not able to bear it, neither yet are you now able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Paul said, envy is among you, strife. Visions is among you. After I was saying earlier, man, we get rid of stuff, sell all that stuff out. Paul said, you yet current, you yet babe. You yet babe. I have not fed you with meat with milk, because you weren't able to say, now you're not able. Thank God said, man, you need to be off the milk. He's called, because among you there's still envy. And there's strife, and there's division. Are you not current and walk as men? But why one say, I am a Paul, another, I am a Paula? Are you not colonel? But Paul said, I give all this stuff up. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollo but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? Listen, look, Paul said, but I have planted Apollo water, but God gave it in free. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that giveth it the in free. Paul said, it's God that gives it in free. I planted Apollo water, but God that gives it in free. He said, listen here, man, I got my mind made. The Lord is the one giving the in free. I'm going to serve this. Jesus, I'm going to look at him, man. I'm not going to look on how I plant Paul. I'm not looking on, on this other thing, man. All this stuff has been done. Because he said, I, I realized that maybe then what we do, what we say, what we go, God have to give the increase. So we got to acknowledge him and confess him. Put him first out there. The Bible teaches us to acknowledge him all the way near direct our path. You know? It's, it's God to give the increase. We water and plant. Paul come to that place, realize that man, what I do? All this stuff I done, thank God, don't mean nothing. If God don't give it in for you, you often hear me say, prayers is good, we need to pray, but if we ain't got a God that answer prayer, those just prayers that have been wasted. We got to have a God up there to answer prayer, you know, we need a God to answer prayer. I say, God, we need you, we need you to answer our prayer. You know, we try to take the word of God and say, God, this is your word. We need you, you, you see us down here, and we need you, we need your help. God, let her, you hear me say often that God, let her win favor with you. Let her find favor with you. Let her do something that call you, Lord, to find favor with them. So Paul said, look at it. Although we water and plant, but God, he's the one to give an increase. So my faith, my confidence in God, not in my flesh, not how well I water, how well I plant, man, but in faith is in God that give the increase. God that give the increase. This I'm going to read. I quote this while I'm going to read. And that'll be the last scripture. I quote a while ago, Matthew. 6 and 24. I'm going to read. This will be the last scripture. Matthew 6 verses 24. No man can serve two masters. And Paul realized that. And thank God God helping us realize that. Because we come. We get into this place. God's going to help us. You know, through Jesus Christ. Paul said, oh, wretched man. I told somebody. We could have something. Paul said, oh, wretched man. That oh, We were talking that up. That, you know, we're trying to get to that place and look like we haven't tried. I said, Paul felt like, like we felt. Paul said, listen here. Oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me? Paul felt like, man, look. And we read about Paul and see how he was, what great man he was. But Paul telling you, oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of death? Paul felt like we felt. You know, didn't put no comfort in the flesh. Paul felt like he was a wretched man. He said, deliver me from this body of death. He said, thank God through Jesus Christ. I don't want nothing of my, no, nothing of mine except Jesus Christ. He said, thank God through Jesus Christ. God's going to deliver me. Through this name that's above every name. Through this name, another, another name. Through this man named Jesus. Paul said, listen here. I suffer the loss of all things, man, that I may win Christ. 
Count it down with the exit of the knowledge of Christ. And I pray God hear our words tonight. I pray God hear our prayer tonight. I pray, thank God for touch our hearts and our minds some kind of way to just, man, that we will focus our attention upon him. You know, all this stuff that's going around us, that's all right. But God just help us focus our attention upon him. And we, when we ain't getting there, God help us. Give us some help. Take all this stuff away from our mind. Listen, verse 24, no man can serve two masters. But eat here, hate the one and love the other. Or else he was hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. You can't do it. Paul said you can't serve God and man. So Paul said, listen here. I choose to serve God. Josh, the, Josh said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. And Jesus, I choose to serve you. Help me to serve you. Help me to serve I want to serve you. Help me to serve you. I want to live for you. I want to work for you. I want to love you. God, you help me. I can't serve two masters. I ain't going to try to serve two masters. God, just help me to serve you. I mean, and forgive me. Help me to behold you. That take away all my sin. I want to encourage you tonight. Put your eyes upon Jesus. Thank God. If you're having trouble, keep your eyes on Jesus. Thank God. If you're having trouble, come keep your eyes on Jesus. Do like Paul did. Do like a Peter did when he walked the water. Man, he was in the hand of reaching Jesus. He still could see Jesus. Although, man, you know, trouble began to rise up, but he still. He could see Jesus had his eyes on Jesus. And Jesus he was in the hand reason. Jesus reached out there with his hand and held him up and came, walked on back into shit with him. But whatever you do tonight, you know, count it but dumb. Forget about yourself. Count it but dumb. I'm not telling you to be a scallywag or be old oh, son, but look, I'm not just telling you to throw yourself away, but I'm telling you. I'm not telling you to go around and look like a tramp, act like a tramp. You can be decent and stuff like that, but, uh, but don't drag what you used to be in the spirit you had. You know, in the world we had that spirit. Had those spirit of proud, a spirit of thinking we this or thinking we that. Had those spirit of thinking everybody looking up on us and all this stuff. Get rid of that stuff. Get rid of that stuff. And behold the Lamb of God. And take away the sins of the world. I thank you tonight. Holy Father, I thank you. I really appreciate you, Father, for this word. Oh, God, I thank you for your word tonight. Lord. Put it in my heart. God, put it in my heart. Let me put nothing before you. Let me to have no desire for none of this other stuff, God. But help me desire for you. That, Lord, I would that you just live in me, walk and talk in me. I would that you rule in me. God, I would that you would possess me. God, I, I may not know how to get you to possess me. God, I'm asking you know how. You say you know all things. That you know how to to get me to possess you. And I'm asking you for that favor. Lord, that you take your boat, not in only me, but all those that so desire to live in you. Desire, Lord, let them forget about everything else. Forget about and just seek to please you, Lord. Seek to live for you. Seek to work for you. God, I pray tonight. Let them forget about all that stuff. Let them set their heart to pleasing you and satisfying you. And Father, I thank you. I appreciate the Lord tonight. Come on, give him another big hand, praise if you will. I thank God for his word tonight. I pray that the word of God helped you out in some kind of way. Those that you are listening at the got to give you this mind to, to as a, the Bible says, that sell everything you have and, and purchase that fear, that, that treasure, that it's a treasure in Jesus Christ. The Bible says we are complete in him. All the fullness of the God is in Jesus' body. And we are complete in him. That's a treasure, folks. That's a treasure. That's a treasure in Jesus. And we are complete in him. That's a treasure. Man, you take away all your sin. And if you haven't sin, the Bible says, if you confess here, forgive you and cleanse from all right. That is a treasure. Nothing else can cleanse you from your sin. Nothing else can wash you. Nothing else can save you. Man, this is a treasure. We're all, you know, we are full of sin, full of fear, corrupt. But we found this treasure, this treasure of Jesus Christ. That forgives us of all that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Writes our name in that Lamb Book of Life. Thank God that we may have eternal life. Man, what a treasure. What a treasure, for what a treasure. And sell out everything. You said, man, I can do it all I want, but God said, God help me to begin to sell out. Sell out my ways. Sell out all my own. And help me receive you. And he will receive us. I thank God again. I'm going to give a little to go because I'll be talking. Home, but I thank God for you and I really appreciate your prayer. Listen, keep us up in prayer. We need we need um, the Lord to help us out, you know, that He'll lead and guide us and direct our path. 
each day and pray that we have a mind to just work for Jesus. Yeah. And I'm praying for you that you have a mind to work for Jesus. We keep praying for all the sick and the shut in them. You know. God will make a way for them that their, their mind to be in tune with Jesus. They, their body may not can do stuff, but their mind, their spirit will be in tune with Jesus. We thank you. God bless you. We request your prayer. Thank God and hold on. Are you still holding on? Hold on and endure. He said, Brother Arthur, just going to have service shift. Lord, we have service Sabbath. But hold on between that and Sabbath. The old devil could come up to you and attack your mind. So I'm, at, I'm encouraging you to hold on. Thinking, even if it's a Sabbath. God's will, we see you Sabbath. God bless you.